So welcome everyone. Um, my name is Joanna Pinto from the University of Oxford and today I'm joined with Peter van Howard. I'm uh, from the Netherlands Cancer Institute. So we are the co-chairs of this year's meeting. And yeah, MRI together starts now. So so take take you from for joining us from all over the world. Um, so far, we had over 700 registrations, which we think it's a very good number and shows that people are interested in this in this topic. Um, so uh, for the past months, the organizing committee has been working very hard to create an exciting event uh, with a broad range of topics related to open, reproducible and inclusive science. Um, this was a very intense process, to be honest, but we are very happy with the diverse group of talks we <coughs> have together um, for this year's event. Um, so we try to cover a broad uh, range of topics, as I said previously, so from hardware to acquisition, um, then analysis, application and, and future, so following sort of the pipeline uh, of research. Um, but we also have some additional um, sessions, uh, particularly we have tutorials and we have tutorials on Python, GitHub and, and data reconstruction. So now Petra. Yes, <laughs> we try to cover these um, uh, topics in three days. They are presented in sessions of about two hours and we are very thankful for all the speakers accepting our invitation to speak uh, during this event. We try to balance for uh, gender, ethnicity, and invited speakers from six different continents. Although sometimes it was a bit hard with the different time zone or with the time zone restrictions. We are also very, it's very amazing that uh, some people accepted our invitation, even though they have to present in the middle of the night or late in the evening. All the sessions will be recorded. So if it's not uh, suitable for your own time zone and you can watch it back later after we've edited the vid videos. Okay, go to the next slide. Yes. <laughs> we also organized some social activities. They will all take place in Gather Town. Today we have a get to know you bingo which will um, happen in the rooftop in Gather Town. There are two mind matching sessions on in two different time zones. They will happen in the library and in the pub. And the pub quiz will be take place on um, in the pub as well. There's also a treasure hunt that's on, continuously ongoing. It's starting now, and you have to search in Gather Town for the uh, instructions. And if you want to know more about these social activities, then you can uh, look for more details on our website. We're also very thankful for all the sponsors, the platinum, gold, and silver sponsors that make this event possible. Um, and I think with this, it's a nice moment to hand over to the moderator, Patricia, of this first session. Thank you, Petra, and good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Patricia Figueiredo from Lisbon, from the University of Lisbon, and it is my great pleasure to be hosting the very first session of this year's MRI together. Uh, the session uh, is going to be on uh, embracing diversity in MRI, a journey towards globally inclusive science. Uh, the session has a total duration of two hours. And during these two, two hours, first we'll have uh, four speakers um, sharing with us their experience in this topic, speaking for about 15 minutes each. And we'll reserve all the questions and the discussion for the end. So after all the talks, we'll have uh, an open floor for everyone to ask questions and to stimulate a discussion about this topic. Um, before we get started, just a few housekeeping notes. Um, as was already said, this session is being broadcasted live and it will be also recorded. Uh, please be aware of MRI's uh, conduct, um, uh, uh, code of conduct, um, MRI together's code of conduct. Um, and I think now we have around 32 participants already uh, joining. I'm sure some people will be joining uh, very soon as well, but I think it's really time to get over to the first speaker. And this is um, Harrison Adulua. Uh, he's currently a PhD student in neuroscience at McGill University in Canada. He holds a bachelor's in radiography and radio radiological science and a master's in public health. And he was a senior radiographer in two leading hospitals in Lagos, Nigeria. 
He will speak to us about Scan With Me, a train the trainer initiative from CAMERA, the ESMRMB uh, working group for uh, Africa, for improving access to high quality FMR MRI in resource limited settings. So the floor is all yours, Harrison. Thank you very much for, for your talk. Okay, thank you so very much. Um, I'll be sharing my screen now. Okay. All right. So um, good morning, everybody. My name is Harrison, and I'm glad for the invitation you extended to me to, you know, be able to present some of the work we are doing to advance the practice of MRI in Africa, most especially in some low and middle income countries. I'll be starting right away. Um, basically, one of the major problems we have in Africa is, um, you know, the accessibility to MRI equipment. And when you look at the global standard, Africa still has one of the lowest access when it comes to MRI equipment. Um, um, even within Africa, even within Africa, we still have some countries that, you know, some countries that still doesn't even have access to this MRI equipment, such, like, such as Chad, Sudan, Eritrea, Somalia, and so on. And I believe that um, some work has been done on the low key to see that these countries have um, access to MRI equipment. Um, so, um, even within Africa also, some countries are still putting effort to make sure that not just having access to MRI equipment is the priority, but they are able to you know, contribute to global efforts to using MRI to address some fundamental issues such as Nigeria, South Africa, Egypt, Algeria, and country like Ghana. Now, the big question that will be bothering on our mind is can we build a, a um, you know, a, a fundamental, um, can we build an, an infrastructure that will stand the test of time to enable um, experts in Africa, uh, you know, have this collaborative network and also enable them to have this, you know, stable funding that will enable them to carry out research that will help addressing global issues. And the answer is yes. And what are we doing about it if the answer is yes? Now, what we are doing about it is where the, the, the organization CAMERA comes into play. So CAMERA is a body that, you know, looks at that, that was set up basically in 2019 to look at the, um, the issues bordering on the practice and the use of MRI in Africa, most especially, and to devise means of addressing those issues. Those issues. So CAMERA practically um, sat down did they need assessment analysis and and then and then saw that they could you know they could first optimize infrastructure possibly in Africa and they could also see look for ways to you know train experts in the continent and most importantly not just training experts in the continent build a collaborative network that means you are trying to bring different experts into one field and try to combine knowledge and use that knowledge to address MRI need in the continent. Um, they have quite a number, cameras and organization have quite a number of um, projects going on, but one major one we did this year, 2023, is what we call the scan with me, is basically to train experts. And when I say experts, I mean N MRI technologies within the continent. Now, there are a lot of things we could train um, experts within the continent on, but when we sat down and looked at it, we realized that, oh, we could basically um, train experts in one of the areas that uh, has received little or no, no attention on, and that is on MRI cardiac. Now, why are we training experts on MRI cardiac, which we just did this um, this, this year? If you look at the global, um, global cardiovascular um, index, um, 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 continents such as Africa, Latin America, and some, some some countries in Southeast Asia, they bear a major burden when it, they bear a major they bear a brunt of the burden when it comes to cardiovascular disease. If you if you if you pull them across different index, um, Africa, for instance, has a major burden when it comes to cardiovascular disease. They, 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 when it comes to fatality, as it relates to cardiovascular disease. Africa has a huge burden of that. 
And when it comes to contribution to research in terms of MRI cardiac, Africa has a very low you know, contribution when it comes to research. And then 80% of the global burden of cardiovascular disease basically comes all the way from you know, Africa and some little, low and middle income countries. Now, if you look at the research that has been done over the years, especially for different parts of the body, um, cardiac or heart issues has received little or no um, um, little or no attention. And that is why we actually that actually informed our decision to, you know, sit down and say, okay, we could train experts in the continent on the use of MRI to, you know, address cardiac cardiac cases. Now, what is um, Scan With Me? Scan With Me is basically a train the trainer initiative. It's an hybrid program we did. And um, it's, it's, it's a way of training MRI, like I said earlier on, it's a way of training MRI technologies in the continent on the, on the use of MRI to you know carry out high quality images it's related to MRI cardiac. Now, when we launched this initiative, we had 104 applicants. We're actually thinking that, oh, we're just gonna be doing this for Africa alone. But by the time we opened the application hub, we realized that, oh, we had applic applicants as far as you know, South America, um, Southeast Asia. And then we said, oh, we couldn't, we cannot just turn these people away because basically they, they are interested to, you know, of, of, of scale their knowledge um, when it comes to MRI cardiac. And then we couldn't take the one hundred and four um, applicants that actually applied because of you know funding issues and others. And then we only able to take forty three trainees across sixteen continent. And you know it's, it's it's quite a huge work because we we actually put into consideration the time frame. Some persons has to join the training early in the morning, late night, and you know, and sometimes um, out of their busy schedules. Now the overview of of um of swim is um you know develop um we try to as much as possible develop proficiency to standardize MRI imaging techniques across this continent uh, that means across um the 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 geopolitical zones that actually partnered with this training and then we tried as much as possible to upscale and advance their cardiac MRI knowledge um and then. Um, we actually uh, we actually tried as much as possible to optimize their standard cardiac MRI protocol to fit well with you know basically the low fields that are being used in these countries, and then what we also did was train. We know you know it, but we try as much as possible to reiterate some things to you, retrain you so as to enable your skill and strengthen your skill over time, and then we also looked at ways to you know collaborate. Um, to to develop this 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 skill of collaboration across continent. Now this come with me for card, MRI cardiac that we did actually took 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 three steps. One is the foundation step. The second one is the you know the what we call the image thing, and then the third one is what we call the practicum. Basically, at the foundation, we train the participants on the basic skill of MRI, basic physics of MRI cardiac, and some other things, some other fundamentals they need to know before they could carry out sufficiently and efficiently MRI cardiac. The second step we took is what we call the image thing. Um, basically, what we did here is you know. We train you now, not basically in theory, but in practical. You will learn from experts. You see them do it in real time, and then you can go back home and then implement this in your low field MRI. And then the very last step, what we call the practicum. Now you have been trained. You have seen those, seen the experts do it. Now it is time for you to apply the knowledge that you have gotten over time, and then apply it to your, you know, low field MRI. And then we saw a lot of improvement to this. Uh, one of the big gains we had for this year's, um, you know, um, 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 training with the swim training we did is decentralization of the of the cardiac MRI protocols in this in this in this um, sorry, the decentralization of the MRI cardiac protocol in this in these countries. Now, the first thing before we started this training, that was, that was before swim, we realized that participants and their centers they use one cardiac MRI protocols to answer a lot of um, issues they use one cardiac protocol to run congenital heart disease they use one cardiac MRI protocol to run cardiomyopathies one cardiac MRI protocol to answer all you know indications that are being referred to their hospital but by the time we are done with swim we realized that okay they could now set up their own protocols 
So now they have their own protocol, initial protocol for cardiac, they, are, they now have their own protocols for cardiomyopathies, they now have a different protocol for fibrosis, they now have a different protocol for uh, hypertrophic heart disease and so on and so forth. And the one thing we also achieved in carrying out this cardiac MRI training is basically a reduction in the time of scan. So um, before now, they could carry out MRI cardiac for two hours, 1.5 hours. Or by the time we are done with this training, basically it reduces the time frame from 1.5 hours to, you know, as little as 45 minutes, you are able to carry out the rapid MRI protocol on your system and you see achieve the aims that you want to achieve at the beginning of the of this scan. Another thing we achieved, we achieved from this um, um, training we did this year was basically there was an enhancement and uh, in, in the quality of images that have been produced in this low field MRI. Now they don't just produce any other image and just pass it on to the radiologist or the cardiologist to read. They now are able to produce images that meet um, you know, global standard. Um, some of the images you now see them produce. And by the way, these images are now open source. You can assess them from the camera, GIT up page. Uh, now we now see participants being able to produce images, especially in the BFF, FFSP um, and protocols, such as the two chambers. They also produce the you know three chambers. Uh, now they are able to produce images such as the B more images, especially the one being implemented in, in, in places like um, Miki where I practice. And then they are able to produce short axis images, and then and and then they also try. They 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 now are able to you know understand why and the reason why they are producing these images. We also see them produce good images in the fourth chamber, and also in the you know T one scout images. You can see that these images, these are what they produce after the training, and to a large extent they are meeting up with you know global standard. That means what could be achieved in developed country can also be achieved in um. In, in developing country, despite the you know challenges that they might be having locally, we also see them produce this sort of images. You know, these are images that have been produced just after the um you know training. One big win we had this year was by the time we started the training, we we're looking at oh, how are we going to give these people access to you know apply some of the knowledge that they have acquired during the course of this training. Um, you know, uh, if you don't start, you might not really um see people coming to help you. We had what we call the vendor participation. We basically had vendor give us access to their simulator. And then this participant that we train could access, could log into the vendor, the vendor simulators and you know be able to, you know, have this visual reality of planning their protocol per legion. Um, um, now Participants in this training we did this year were able to design their own cardiac MRI protocol and they were able to import it out of the simulator and share the knowledge, you know, make it open open for others to be able to access it. And now this, like I said earlier on, this, this, these protocols are now open source. You can actually assess them because they are being designed from those who are in the field. And then they were they are able now to, you know, understand their images see if there's an artifact and you no know, not just passing out any images that way see if there's an artifact and and are able to devise means to address those artifacts as it relates to their system and then there's what we call the on the go learning they are now able to you know just sit down in their in their in their comfort zone log into the simulators practice 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 and then implement it in their in their local their local their local machines and then make this um protocol accessible to us these are some of the big wins we had from the quality of the images to you know decentralization of the cardiac MRI protocol and then to uh, this 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 swim program we did this year was actually it's actually a pilot study and uh, we are hoping that by next year we could we could you know do something also might not be related to cardiac, might be outside cardiac MRI. Now, I will conclude by saying that um, big things are done in little ways. The little effort we are putting in here and there just to see that MRI is accessible to all in Africa, that whatsoever you acquire in the Western world or in the developed country can also be acquired in the you know, developing or underdeveloped country. 
little things like this can go a long way. And we are looking at, you know, participating or partnering with a lot of um, a lot of you around the world who are interested in volunteering, who are interested in carrying out student exchange to see that, you know, MRI is accessible to those who are even in the art to reach, in the art to reach area and so on and so forth. Thank you.